sandwiches can be great, right? You can put anything in a sandwich, pretty much anything. You know, slap it between two pieces of any kind of bread, or even not bread. Some people use lettuce or Swiss chard to make <coughs> sandwiches. Um, but it's a wonderful way to uh, treat your vegetables as part of that main dish. All right. And what I'm going to do today is um, feed you a roasted vegetable sandwich with mozzarella and kale pesto. And I really love roasting vegetables. Um, you can roast any vegetable, I promise, any vegetable. Okay. On a cookie sheet, um, you'll want to, I like to use one with sides because that way it keeps things from rolling around and causing, wreaking havoc in the oven. Um, you can either spray it with pan spray or line it with either parchment paper or aluminum foil. Parchment paper is naturally non-stick, so I do like to use that. Um, aluminum foil you can reuse, so it's kind of up to you and what you want to do. Um, but make sure you do line your, your sheet pan. And pretty much any vegetable can be roasted at about 400 to 400 to 25 degrees for about 20 minutes, and it'll be done. You can season it however you like. The two constants that I like to use are olive oil and salt. Okay, sometimes I use black pepper if I'm getting crazy. <laughs> um, but then you can also use some other herbs and spices as well. Um, you can use things that are already pre-mixed, like Italian seasoning um, or chili powder, or you can use single herbs and spices. Um, really just depending on what you want it to taste like, okay? My tips as far as roasting are to try to cut everything the same size, all right? That way you'll know that they're all going to cook at the same time, okay? Um, my other tip for roasting is to not mix vegetables that might take longer to cook than the other vegetables, all right? So when you're thinking of your vegetables that you're going to roast, look at the texture, look at the water content, and try to put things on S the same pan that are going to roast at the same time. You wouldn't put potatoes and zucchini on the same sheet pan at the same time because those zucchini are going to cook a lot faster than those potatoes, all right? Unless you, cook, you cut the zucchini really big and the potatoes really small, which you can certainly engineer that as well, okay? But eggplant and peppers are similar water content, similar texture, and they will cook really well together at the same time, okay? Um, I don't know if any of you have gotten eggplant in your shares yet. Yes? No? Okay, a few yes, mostly no. Um, eggplant is one of those kind of polarizing <coughs> vegetables. Unless you grew up eating it, you're not really a fan, right? I love eggplant. I grew up eating it. I think it's delicious. It's very versatile if you are curious as how to use it. Some of you may have seen my um, class last year on roasting eggplant. If you haven't, it is on the blog. Um, and what I did last year was include a master recipe for roasting eggplant in slices just like this, and then being able to use that roasted eggplant throughout the week in a variety of different recipes. So if you are curious about that, please check that out. It's on there um, for your perusal. But for this particular um, dish, you can either cut them up into chunks like this or cut them up into slices and then cut them whatever size you think your bread is going to be, okay? It's a very sort of forgiving kind of recipe or forgiving kind of method when you are roasting those vegetables. And then I just like to put a little bit of olive oil on there. All right. You can, of course, toss the... Um, vegetables in a bowl beforehand if you're concerned about getting the olive oil nice and even. I'm not that kind of cook, so I'm just going to sort of throw it on there. I'm going to do just a little bit of salt, all right, and I've got my oven preheated to 425 because I like the kind of char that that higher temperature is going to put on the eggplant and on the peppers. So I can just put that in. It's a great way, again, to, cut, to cook any vegetable, all right? If you're looking to cut down on the bulk in your refrigerator because it's overflowing with all of these vegetables, roasting them automatically decreases that surface <coughs> area. You can see here, this is four or five eggplant, okay? This is at least five peppers, all right? They're pretty to look at. They're super useful. You don't even have to put them on a sandwich if you don't want to. You can toss these into pasta sauce, put them in tacos, puree them and make soup, or use them just in anything, okay? But once you've got them cooked like this, 
they're a lot easier to use. And so I do have some sandwiches that I'm going to make for you here. Um, but you can't have a sandwich without some sort of spread, right? And as I mentioned, I'm going to do something with kale. This is going to be a kale pesto. And this is a kind of kale that's a little bit different than that curly kale. Now, have you all seen this one before? Most of you have. Okay, so this is a flatter leaf kale. Um, it's known as lacinato kale, Tuscan black kale, or my favorite, dinosaur kale. All right, and the reason being because it kind of looks like what they would imagine a dinosaur skin. <coughs> okay. It's a little bit milder than curly kale, but it can be used in any way that you would or use regular kale. Okay. Um, it's getting more popular. You can find it in grocery stores now. Um, so if you haven't tried it yet, then, and if you get it in your share, don't be scared. All right. And the milder taste is nice in a preparation like this where it's going to be raw. Okay, so I'm not cooking this kale. I'm just going to puree it and make a pesto just like you would out of basil or another herb. Okay, pesto just means pounded, so it can be anything. Okay, so what I'm doing here are roughly even portions of kale and parsley. I'm going to put in a little bit of olive oil to get it going. can see pretty quickly that turns into a paste, okay, because it's pounded. I'm going to put in a little bit more olive oil to help it go. Whenever you're using a food processor, you want to make sure that you stop it about halfway. Scrape down your sides to make sure everything is evenly incorporated. And at this point, <coughs> I'm going to add a little Parmesan cheese. So the recipe and all of the other recipes will be on the blog from today. Um, in this recipe, you'll see that there are nuts added to the pesto. I'm not adding nuts today, just in respect in case anyone's allergic. It's kind of hard to tell in a big group who's allergic to what. But um, the recipe on the blog will have almonds in it. You can use any nut that you like, pistachio, pumpkin seeds, walnuts, pecans, Whatever your preference is will taste good in this, okay? You'll get the most flavor if you toast your nuts first. The best way to do that is in a dry pan, either in the oven or on top of the stove. I prefer to do it on top of the stove because then that way I can see sort of the color. Um, you, if you've ever toasted nuts at home before, you know that they can go from like beautiful toasty brown to black, you know, horribleness in seconds. So. Um, putting them on top of the stove to mitigate that. That's it. So there's our pesto. It's a really pretty bright green. You saw how much that kale was cut down. You saw how much I had in there. So again, this is another use for sort of decreasing all of the bulk that's in your refrigerator. There. And what I'm going to do is use that as a spread for the sandwich. Now you can certainly use any spread that you like. This is just yet another way to get a vegetable serving in. There was also a little bit of garlic in there. We know that garlic has all kinds of healthful properties. If you're not a fan of pesto or kale, certainly some hummus would be really nice on a roasted vegetable sandwich. Of course you could do mayonnaise and mustard too if you're more Classic, that's fine too. All right, gotta have a little cheese. So this is just mozzarella. And while I'm putting the last of these sandwiches together, Sarah is going to pass out some so y'all can taste. And we've got them loaded up right there. So any vegetable would be great on here. Tomato, squash, you could even roast some kale. You could roast hot peppers if you like that. Um, roasted cabbage is really nice. Broccoli, cauliflower, if you haven't tried roasted broccoli and cauliflower. 
It's quite delicious. Okay, how are we doing on the sandwiches? Is everyone going to have enough there? Sorry? Yeah, we can just leave at the end of the table. So what do you guys think? This bread is just from Kroger, right? So it's not super fancy bread. Um, you could, of course, do any bread that you like if you wanted to do more of a sliced bread, um, or you could do a pita, even a tortilla would be nice. Is everyone fed? Okay. I'm going to go on and set these aside. Is this something that you've done at home already? Okay. So it's, you know, this is good for parties, too. You can just buy one big loaf of bread, make the sandwich ahead of time, and then cut it. And that seasoning will actually increase, um, the flavor will increase as the sandwich sits for a little bit.